Hey guys, we're saying hi. Well, it seems it's about to happen again in Iceland. The next eruption seems to be imminent. That's what the Icelandic Meteorological Office is reporting. So let's have a closer look at that. So guys, civil protection alert level declared, troubling Grindavik, flooding in Grindavik, volcanic threats, but also what is going on in Svartsengi. There's new graphs and new releases. So this is a very interesting video that gives you a great overview of what is happening in Iceland. And it is imminent, guys, I can tell you that. And they've been busy to raise the defense walls around Swartzengi of up to nine meters. So nine meters higher because the lava has come dangerously close to the Blue Lagoon in the last eruptions. So they needed to be raised considerably. And they started this basically in January and... Uh, what the geotechnical engineers are saying between lava flows from previous eruptions, a kind of a channel is forming for a new lava that would flow towards Swartzengi power plant. So there is a way for the lava to reach that and then they breach the walls and then it's over. So that's why considerably, considerably they needed to raise the defense walls. So what they also did, they were raising the defense walls, basically the entire defense walls system coming from the main road from Grinda Vico Vigo down to the Blue Lagoon because the last eruption has gone so far west. But not only there are they building defense walls also in Grinda Vic, but not the usual ones that you think from the water because there is trouble because of the volcanic eruption the water can get into town more easily. And we'll talk about that again. And the engineers are saying, we are in a race against time. At Swartzengi for these defense walls, they're usually pushing around 60,000 cubic meters of material per week. Why is this so important? Let's talk about this tunnel again. So the engineer says, if there's a similar flow like we had in the last eruption, then there's an open line into Swartzengi basically between this lava carpet that has formed in June and November. So this seems to build like something like a tunnel or a river where the lava can easily flow into Swartzengi. So that is really, really scary. So he says, you have to stop that channel. You have to block that channel so that it doesn't flow into Swartzengi. And it's already difficult because that lava has already reached the defense walls and has already creeped over the defense wall. So they have to move the lava away because it's already coming over. So it's more important that the defense walls are much higher when the new lava comes. And what is the Metrological Office saying about when this comes? Soon, that's the problem. So the Met Office says the likelihood of a new eruption in the Sudnuka Crater series is increasing and it could be increasing for quite a while. They have released interesting graphics that I want to show you, but also I want to give you an update what else is going on in Iceland and in this area. It's very interesting, so stay with me. So let's start with the Icelandic Met Office, the Icelandic Meteorological Office. They've had bad weather. They have had weather warnings the last two days and it's still warned in the east fjords and in other risk of avalanches in some areas of course it's winter right um, but what about the Swartzengi area we have bad weather there we've had it yesterday but we will also have it in the coming days that's in the forecast and that might affect they're pretty sure the sensitivity of the measuring network that they have around the volcano that they have around the land rise underneath Swartzengi and in the Sutnuka crater series so that they could deliver a warning time once these seismic swarms start before the eruption and if they're in the micro seismic range these measuring instruments they need to be undisturbed from strong winds rain snowfall and stuff like this so that seems not to be the case so the eruption could start without any warning it could come all over sudden so the weather was bad throughout the Reykjanes Peninsula yesterday and uh, weather in the coming days um 
severely will affect response times should we see a volcanic eruption. Strong winds is what they're saying is probably the biggest problem, but also snowfall um, that can disrupt the measuring of these earthquake movements and also reduce the accuracy of the GPS measurements that measure the land rise. And we know the land keeps rising, 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 and then when it's slowing down, and then when we have the earthquake swarm, that is an indication that the eruption might come. If it's slowing down, you might ask, well, if it's slowing down, why is that an indication for an eruption? Because that magma chamber is reaching the point of maximum elasticity before it breaks and sends the magma out. Same with a rubber band. I can stretch it, stretch it, stretch it, and then I can't stretch it anymore. And if I pull more, it breaks. And that's the same with the magma chamber. It then sends the magma out of the magma chamber on its way. So causing either, either an intrusion, sending the magma out, but magma is not able to make the way to the surface, or it makes the way to the surface, then it comes out as lava. It's likely that it makes the way to the surface because the way to the surface is already paved, so to speak, because we've had multiple eruptions coming out from that magma chamber underneath Sreutzengi going into the Sutnuka crater series. So there is a highway, there is a tunnel already mined for that magma to flow. So what the Icelandic meteorological office is saying they're saying well we will try to monitor this situation as closely as possible but they're also giving out a warning to people like check the weather forecast when you're traveling not only because of harsh road conditions avalanches whatever area you are but also if the weather is very bad be considerate if you go to Grindavik for example because you might have to be evacuated without a warning if it, if the eruption is coming and you know they don't think is likely right now but it's it still, it could erupt inside Grindavik or at the doorsteps of Grindavik. This volcano is always good for a surprise. And what they're also saying, and that is interesting, they can say it's going to happen within the next three days, within the next month, within the next week. They just think it's going to happen soon. And they say that period where we see this increased risk of an eruption, it can last up to a month. So that could drag it out even towards the end of February because they say they have used model calculation to estimate how much magma has so far accumulated in Swartzengi. Look at this graphic, they just released it a few days ago. So we're almost at that point where we were when the last eruption started. So the estimate is never an exact number, so you can't tell. And the the volume of the magma in this model calculation lies within a certain range that has always a lower and an upper limit. So according to the last modeling that they have done, the amount of magma that has now accumulated in that magma chamber underneath Swartzengi has reached the lower limit within that range. So there's room for it to grow more until it erupts. So they say based on experience that they have gathered from recent eruptions, the modern modeling calculations have shown that a magma flow or a volcanic eruption has occurred after this lower limit is reached. So it can't happen any day, but it might make us wait as well. If we look at the six eruptions that have occurred in the Sudnuka Crater series, eruptions have started anywhere from three days to four weeks after the lower limit is reached. So that's why this time frame of a month. Of course, this does not mean that it's certain that the next eruption will begin within a month. It could last longer. Um, but good thing is they do have a lot of experience now because there were so many eruptions so the most likely scenario is any time between right now and the next four weeks so probably in february and that's why i want you to look at that graph that's interesting that's that's kind of new that they're releasing this kind of graph and it shows the model calculation of the volume of magma accumulating underneath Swartzengi over time. And what we see on the y-axis, it shows the volume of magma 
why the x-axis shows the time limit. So two criteria are presented, a lower limit and an upper limit, that these two represent the range in which the probability of a magma flow and eruption increases. So this graph shows you once the lower limit is reached, the probability increases. And basically, it starts with November 20th when we saw the last eruption. So you see the curve goes down. The magma chamber was emptying out suddenly because a lot of lava was flowing out at the eruption site. And then it gradually started to accumulate again. So basically, this is what they're showing us here. And then if you see that red um, arrow, this is basically what they're saying. And that yellow bar, this is the range where we now reach the lower limit and then can reach the upper limit. So that yellow area is this zone. If that red curve goes into this zone and is in this zone, we could see an eruption based on experience at any time. But of course, the volcano can always decide otherwise. And we're talking about, okay, these model calculations are based on measurements. What kind of measurements? So based on the measurements of the land rise of this land uplift velocity that they obtained from the GPS data, and then delineate the magma accumulation between Swartzengi and then if the land uplift velocity, for example, the magma accumulation rate between beneath Swartzengi decreases, this could affect the calculations and change the timing again of the lower and upper limit. We see in that curve there's a little dip, but so far it is gradually. And then they have given us another graphic of the past events, of the past eruption um, at the Sutnuka Crater series. And they say that history tells us that the period from when the lower limit is reached to when an eruption begins has ranged from a few days to a month. And the period of increased risk of eruption can, of course, again, last a month. And what you see in this graphic here, it shows the number of days that passed once the magma accumulation had reached the lower limit, once that red line has reached that yellow area, that lower limit, lower limit was reached and then it shows us how many days to eruption. The November 20th eruption was only three days. The eruption in summer was 30 days. That made us wait. And then we had one in March. It was making us wait 11 days. Another one in March, eight days. One in February, two days. And in January, 12 days. So, yeah, it's pretty widespread. But I think if you see most of it, I think mid-February, if nothing happened until then, it's really strongly increasing. So again here, and you already see it, the, the y-axis shows the dates of the eruptions and the x-axis shows the number of days from the lower limit until the eruption. They did not include the May 29th event because they said that the system changed before that event. Um, remember, I reported about this. I don't want to go in depth about this, but I have videos about this. So this is what we're dealing with. New hazard map that they have released because of that still stays the same. It's orange. They haven't increased the danger level in the eruption zone three. So that is still the same. But of course, that can change at any time. I mean, don't get me wrong, they have already declared the danger level because of that eruption. And we have seen on Wednesday, um, there were four small earthquakes that they were recorded um, basically over the magma chamber at the Sutnuka Crater series. But since then, there are no earthquakes that have been recorded. The danger level that they declared, they say, is especially as a precaution for the coming weekend, or we're in the weekend right now, 
Um, they say the visibility is expected to be limited, so they might also not be able to see it right away. If the measuring instruments are affected, then they might not notice it so quickly. Um, of course, traffic could be disrupted in the weather as well. And the police in Sudorns, they advise people not to travel to Grindavik until absolutely necessary because there's the two factors. You might not notice that the eruption has began, which is a problem because then you don't know where it is. There's not much, not good sight. You don't see the glow, the smoking. And then escape routes might be blocked if there's bad weather and snow and they're slippery and all that. So don't go there if you don't have to. That's what the officials say. They have a yellow weather warning for the capital area of Reykjavik for South Iceland. Um, so bad weather for the measuring system. And news from Grindavik. Grindavik has a problem not only from the volcano, from lava flows, from earthquake cracks, opening, damaging homes and everything. They have built defense walls, so they're constantly building something. I always said like the TV show Fraggle Rock, they're always building and someone comes and tears it down. So not just the volcanic activity is plaguing Grindavik. The sea has rushed into the town this morning. So there is a danger level in effect. You see it on the pictures. They have been building barriers and they have increased their preparedness due to the risk of the eruption, of course, because right now still dozens of people are staying in the town and the fire chief does not recommend that. He doesn't want them. Don't stay overnight if you don't have to, because also they they expect heavy seas in Grindavik Harbor and the harbor bank at Midgard has subsided by up to half a meter in recent years due to these earthquakes. So to prevent flooding into the structures, they try to take precautions and they have built a dike of, of like sandbags, rubber bags filled with water. They have placed that on their pier so that the sea will not flow into all these um, commercial buildings, the fisheries, the fish processing plants. So the harbor master says, you know, um, there's transformer station in addition to the fish processing plants in the harbor that do serve nearby houses and businesses. So they have poured concrete around them. So he thinks they're well protected right now. So it seems they really, really have to protect that beautiful little town from, from all areas. They have increased their preparedness and they're watching the town in 24 hour shifts. Yesterday, the Civil Protection Department has upgraded the hazard assessment in Grindavik from uncertain to dangerous. Uh, the people are advised not to travel there unless absolutely necessary. The road authority is on heightened alert, keeping all routes out of town open, trying to clear them out. Fire department and police are on duty 24 hours a day. They say we're monitoring all escape routes, that they are clear. Um, uh, and support the evacuation. He says this weekend there were about 40 homes occupied in Grindavik and he says these are always the same residents who still have their permanent residence here in the town and uh, he says at this dangerous level that has been declared right now um, that it's not advised but authorities say we fully respect it. So they're not fighting the residents again. But they're saying we sure hope the next eruption will be the last eruption. Will that be the case? <sighs> I doubt it a little bit. And then the restaurant that they have in Grindavik, um, the pizza restaurant, it was packed. Lots of tourists are coming to Grindavik. So that's also a concern. So don't go there. And guys, if you like this video, please leave it a like, share it with your friends. And if you not yet become a member of this channel for more behind the scenes of the... Ugh, that's not nice, Wahid. More behind the scenes of what's going on here. Lots of chaotic things. So join the membership level. Click the join button. And the link is also in the description of this video. And if you'd like to support the channel, my dog's vet bill right now and the stuff that they're eating behind me, go to my buymeacoffee.com site slash silky and buy us a coffee or two. It's greatly appreciated. And thanks so much for doing this, guys. You are such a great help. You have absolutely no idea. And 
check out the videos in the end screen. I see you very, very soon, probably with an eruption report. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.